President's son, uh, the, the former vice president's son, Hunter Biden, has been a point of scrutiny already in this presidential campaign. But now he represents a much bigger concern for Joe Biden personally. Joe and Jill opened up about their son's struggles with mental health, something that, as we all know, is plagued by stigma in this society. What would they say about it? Will it be part of this campaign? Should it be? The answer. Hunter mm -hmm. came out in a magazine article talking about his struggle with mental health. I say bravo for him. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I'll tell you what, hearing how the campaigns are negotiate, what does it mean, points to a stigma. Nobody would have ever said that if Hunter Biden came out and said he had leukemia, God forbid. Yeah. We'd all be like, oh, geez, you know, I hope he can get the treatment. I hope you're all right with it. Mental illness? Mental health issue? Oh, what does it mean? How do, what has Hunter's health meant to you? And what do you want it to mean in terms of what you put into the campaign about well, it? Well, we've seen the struggle. You know, we've seen the struggle, and we know that uh, most American families are dealing with some sort of, of struggle like we are. And uh, I think they can relate to us as, um, you know, as parents who are um, hopeful and are supportive of our son, and we will continue to be supportive. And I think that makes us more empathetic about helping other Americans. And I think He's one- He's beat this. Yeah. This kid, I'm telling you, as you know, you knew Bo. Bo is my soul. Hunter's my heart. And Hunter's been through some tough times, but he's fighting. He's fighting. He's never given up. He's the most honorable, decent person I know. And I, I, I read that article, and all I could do is think of, my God, he gives me so much more credit than I deserve so as a dad. But it took enormous courage. I knew yeah. nothing about that article. Nothing about that article. Except he told me toward the end he was having this long interview. But it's a catharsis for him. And look, everybody has to deal with these issues in a way that is consistent with who they are and what they are. This guy's the most generous, honorable man that I know. And I am confident, confident he's going to make it. And uh, look, um, it's, uh, it's it. the idea that we treat mental health and, quote, physical health mm -hmm. as somehow they're distinct. Yeah. It's health. Yeah. It's health. We have to put more money into mental health, whether it's for um, our education system, whether it's for our veterans, whoever it's for, we have to, we have to start to uh, look at it, talk about it, and put more money into Talking it. Talking about it is huge. That's why yeah. I bring up uh, Hunter. You've been hearing about your son. You got in this race. You knew everything they could find about Hunter was sure. going to come back and be revisited on you. Sure. Business. We'll see what they do with him having a mental health struggle, but discussing it as something that you can beat, something you can treat. Already, uh, that's a different dialogue than we're used to hearing. Curing cancer? That would mean so much across so many levels. Mm -hmm. Getting people to accept that mental illness and mental health yeah. awareness is the same as any other malady, that could be huge as well. It's gigantic. Yeah. And by the way, it's doable. Yeah. It is doable. The idea that somehow, I mean, think of all the people out there, Chris, who don't. I mean, one of the things we should be debating in this campaign is health care. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we have the adequate, and what's the best way to get health care? When Barack and I, when Barack did, I helped when the Affordable Care Act, we made parity between mental health and physical health. That was a fundamental breakthrough in how we thought about how things should work. So look, I just think the- The party now wants to get rid of the ACA. Medicare for all cannot exist with the ACA. It cannot, and that's why I'm opposed to any Republican who wants to dismantle it or any Democrat who wants to dismantle it. The idea that you're gonna come along and take the most significant thing that happened that any president has tried to do and that got done and dismantle it makes no sense to Four me. Four out of the top five people in your polls right now are on the complete opposite side from you. Well, I understand that, and that's worth debating about. That's about the future. What are we gonna do? I believe they're totally sincere. I think they think they have the right answer, but look, starting over would be, I think, a sin. They say what? you're either all in or it's half measures that don't work. Well, let me removed. tell you something. I, <laughs> I noticed the measures and the Affordable Care Act worked pretty well, put 20 million people back and gave them health care, yeah. 100 million people who had pre-existing conditions. You notice none of them are saying they want to do with any of that, right? And you notice none of them are saying that they, but they are saying they want to, if you're satisfied with your employer-based health care, you got to give it up. If you're Look, we provide a Medicare option. That's exactly what Rap Rock and I talked about in the beginning. Couldn't get it through, though. No, we couldn't get it, but now, now things are changing because guess what's happened? You know, the thing Brock and I would talk about, God love him, he never took 
credit that he should have, because it was like everything was dropping on his desk. And I said, we ought to make the case that people know what you did. It wasn't until they started to take it away, they even realized it was a consequence of what Barack had done. And so now, if you notice, in 18, we went out in all of those campaigns, you find the Republicans in, I want to get, a I want to get rid of pre-existing conditions coverage. I want to get rid of... Uh, so it's a different place. Mm. And the, 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 the public's been educated in a way that I believe they've embraced it. And I'm ready to take that on. One more question for you, if you don't sure. mind. You're much more interesting. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> that um, I agree no, with. <laughs> one, one, one more question. Everybody um, knows that. You mentioned Senator Harris, the debate. Uh -huh. I'll talk to the VP about that as well. Um, but when you were listing the things, well, here are the things we're going to have to fight against in this. All right, here we are. Uh, this is, they may not think you have this, this, this. You did not imagine, I would think, or I'll ask it differently. Yeah. Did you imagine that one of the things you'd have to deal with early on is whether or not your husband's past is basically bigoted? They can say, I don't think you're a racist, they but... They could say but as, anything, but... as soon but, as that comes out, yeah. the crime bill, yeah. working with people who were seen to be obviously extreme thinkers and bigots themselves, busing, mm -hmm. did you anticipate those, and does it make you feel differently about where this could be headed? You know, I think that they were looking at the past. I mean, the one thing you cannot say about Joe is that he's a racist. I mean, he, st he got into politics because of his commitment to civil rights. And then to be elected Barack Obama, and then someone is saying, you know, you're a racist. As soon as I heard those well, they say words. they you're not a racist, but I know, but as soon as I stinks. heard those words, I thought, uh-oh, what's coming next? And um, I think the American people know Joe Biden. They know his values. They know what he stands for. And uh, they didn't buy it. You don't think that, well, because you, you took a hit in the polls. And some but of African-Americans. the polls are coming back up. The polls are coming back up. So we just saw that today. And, uh, and I think the more people get to know Joe, the, the higher the polls will get. Chris, you I want to thank for your time. Ah, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's not sure. Thank you. No, no. <laughs> I thanked um, <laughs> the former VP's wife because that was the end of the interview with her. And then, obviously, the VP and I went on and had an interview. So, look, there is a long way to go. And the point in campaigns is you don't know where you're going to get hit from. You don't know what it's going to mean. The question is, after this interview, is the former VP, Joe Biden, in a better position or did it cement problems that he has?